This is complex, but I have never treated you as a moron. As you will see, there are, there are two answers that will solve this problem, and that is the light. The light. We need the light. And then the light, as in sunlight, is the best, best disinfectant. Those are the two answers. There is a fight for power right now, and it is obvious that America has lost power. We are not leading the world. You know that, and I know that. And you know we, something's not right here. And now what's happening is the players in the world are fighting to take the top dog spot. And they don't agree on everything, but they do agree on these few things. I showed you at the beginning. They're anti-Israel. They want to realign the power. They want to defeat capitalism and the Western way of life. And they're anti-American, anti-West. Now, Libya is the key to this. Libya, France is leading in England. That bothered me. And we were waiting for the UN. And then we started using this responsibility to protect. It's this idea that came from, you would think, from the UN. It didn't. The idea comes from, uh, what's her name, Susan Powers. Uh, she is, uh, what's her name? Samantha Powers. Samantha Powers. Now, she is, uh, she's here advising the President of the United States. But she's also the wife of Cass Sunstein. Don't they make a cute little couple? So the idea comes from Powers, the wife of Cass Sunstein. And Soros likes the idea and funds the idea. And it's an idea out of this book. It becomes this, funded by him. And the UN adopts the idea. And this is the idea that she advises him to use to go in to Libya to go to war. Got it? Now I want to introduce you because this is so much more than, in, than Libya. This really has nothing to do with Libya. Libya, Muammar Gaddafi, it doesn't matter to him. He doesn't care. Muammar Gaddafi, if he's on the side for the open society, great. If he's not, he's out. It doesn't matter. As his number two man told us, the ship has sailed. You're either on it or you're off. It doesn't matter. It's the open society that matters to him. Now, the UN's special rapporteur on human rights in occupied Palestine territories, oh, well, that, sounds, that sounds like he's fair, huh? Is this guy, Richard Falk. Richard Falk is very anti-Israel. He said in a report delivered to the Human Rights Council in Geneva that Israeli policies amount to ethnic cleansing and wars uh, and crimes against humanity. Oh, but he goes much further than that. Listen to him speak about Israel. Kinds of uh, collective punishment that are uh, being imposed on the entire people of Gaza have a resemblance to collective punishment that was imposed by the uh, Nazis in, uh, in Germany. And that if this is kind of circumstance is allowed to persist, it could produce a holocaust. 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 By the way, just like Van Jones, he's also a 9-11 truther. Okay. So wait a minute. What does this say? Could you please put up the, 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 uh, the bullet points here of the things that this does that we all agree on? We all agree on the things that this is supposed to protect people of, the responsibility to protect. Do you have that, do you have that thing up? It is, it's fantastic. I'm sorry to ask for it out of the blue like that. It says, we're, so there it is, we're supposed to protect against genocide, war crimes, ethnic cleansing, crimes against humanity. You know what, a, a word that would really just sum all that up is a holocaust. So here's the guy at the UN saying that Israel, the way that they are treating the people in Gaza, could produce a holocaust. Now he wants to use this, the responsibility to protect, to invade, not Libya, he would like to use it to invade Israel. Because he believes that Israel is engaged in ethnic cleansing and crimes against humanity. Two of the four platforms of this. The idea is that the international community, if it ever decided that you as a country were doing crimes against humanity, then they would be justified in intervening. Now, if you think this is nuts, 
Let me show you what the deputy prime minister of Turkey, you remember when I told you a couple of weeks ago, watch Turkey, something's not right in Turkey. Deputy prime minister, quote, we wish the United Nations had made such resolutions and countries had taken action in the face of the incidents in Gaza, Palestine, and other regions. This guy is asking now to use this to go into Israel. An open society, a borderless world going against Israel. Boy, we haven't even begun. Gang, we are on the wrong side. How could Sunstein be for Muammar Gaddafi and Soros? How could they be for him? And now they're against him. Well, it's really quite easy. It's really quite easy. And I'll show you next. Tonight we're throwing together um, a show for you, and I mean throwing together. We've spent uh, a long time on all of these facts, and we put them together for you today. And we're trying to move as rapidly as we can. It's a lot, and I appreciate your patience with us. And please DVR the shows and tie them all together. On tomorrow, a special show about the Fed that you don't want to miss. While everyone was wondering about Libya and what was going on, no one, we noticed, wasn't, was talking about Israel. First of all, we were the only show that gave complete coverage on the slaughter of the Fogel family. Five members of an Israeli family that were br brutally stabbed to death by terrorists. Mom, dad, three kids, age 11, four, and three months old, stabbed by Palestinian terrorists. The kids were found next to their toys lying in pools of blood. And what's worse, the Palestinians were dancing in the streets when they heard the news. No one covered it. Then we came back after last weekend, and everybody was talking about the, uh, the bombing on Libya, and we asked again why no one was covering the largest rocket pounding into Israel in the last two years. Benjamin Netanyahu had come out the Friday before and said the communists, the socialists, and extremists had created a fusion and were working together, but he was all but ignored. Yesterday, there was a terrorist bombing in Israel, and the deputy prime minister of Turkey is calling for the bombing of Israel now. With this, the UN, responsibility to protect, funded by Soros, pushed by Cass Sunstein's wife, who's an advisor in the White House, and what we're using to go into Libya. Now, let me ask you. Israel is under tremendous pressure. Netanyahu said they're going to have to retaliate. I want to show you this map real quick. I mean, Israel is surrounded. Whoops, sorry, you lost me on that. Israel is surrounded. Israel, surrounded. Surrounded. For the first time that the government of the United States of America, the administration, first time in my life, I think we have sold out our ally of Israel. We are on the wrong side. You have people, you have people that are pushing for a grand solution. And, and what was it Cass Sunstein's wife called for? She said a mammoth protection force, something that would be great, a mammoth protection force against Israel. Well, the Muslim Brotherhood are about to have their hands on a mammoth protection force. It used to be called the Egyptian army. Why fund it? when you can just take it. I contend part of this mammoth army may be the Egyptian army. This mammoth army that uh, Mrs. Sunstein, Mrs. Powers has been longing for may be soon also the Libyan army. You have Time Magazine reporting that Obama knew or may have knew, known, his advisors did, that the rebels we are now protecting may be Al-Qaeda or the Muslim Brotherhood. I contend that Gaza is also being armed. Let me show you this photo. This is a ship from Turkey where they are smuggling arms into Gaza. The one thing that is uh, hanging out there that needs to be solved is... If you're trying to make Gaddafi into a hero, why go after him? Because the enemy of my enemy is my friend. But once my friend has been defeated, he is again my enemy. Soros dishonored himself. He allowed himself to be dishonored by vouching for Gaddafi because he said that Libya was going to be part of his open society. Well, that ship has sailed. Have you ever heard the phrase, there is no honor among thieves? 
The ship has sailed. Do you really think Soros ever really considered Gaddafi friends? Finish the puzzle. They were never friends. He is useful on our side? Great. If he's more useful on the other side? Great. I don't really care. All they care is about winning the game. It's in Rules for Radicals. The ends justify the means. The win is the destruction of Israel, destruction of capitalism, the destruction of the economic system, and to the winner goes the spoils. Who will win? After you watch tonight's show, does it make a little more sense to you why support the revolution in Egypt but not in Iran and then use military in Libya? The praise for the Muslim Brotherhood is peaceful, but the Tea Parties is violent. No war for oil, no war, and then all of a sudden, a third war in a Muslim country without Congress and the UN? It didn't make sense that France is leading the attack, does it now? That we would disrespect England and Israel while being friendly with our foes, does it now? There's one, one, one thing left. High oil prices, don't drill, and help Brazil drill. A Brazilian company has just been given the okay to do the first first ever floating deep water oil and gas production storage offloading facility in the Gulf of Mexico. Brazil, Brazil, the president would be completely okay with awarding drilling permits to foreign companies while American companies are sitting on the sidelines and suffering a painful slow death. Who's making those permits so darn difficult? Cass Sunstein. Does it make sense? Oh, by the way, the name of the company, Petrobras the company that George Soros bought an $811 million stake in in 2008. I mean, what are the odds? By the way, Soros cut his Petrobras shares in 2009. Look, these things only make sense when you also know that no one has yet responded to the charges that we have on Stephen Lerner about economic terrorism. Well, is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak, not to act is to act. Dietrich Bonhoeffer. More information at glennbeck.com. From New York, good night, America.